All right, my friend, welcome to today's video on the best protein powder for muscle building. Now, I'm really excited for this video because when I was creating this and I was doing some research, I was searching YouTube for a really good breakdown of the different types of protein and their effect on muscle building so we can make an informed decision on which one might be best for you based on your goals and based on some of the available research. So in today's video, we're gonna cover um, the main sources of protein powder and where they're sourced from. I'm gonna give you some real science on the biological value of each of these um, why their amino acid content may, may, might make some better than others, the right choice for muscle building on what we believe is the best muscle building protein source, period. We're gonna cover all that in today's video. I'm really excited you're here. Get out your pen and paper, take some notes. Let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com all right, so I wanna kinda of get to one of the first punch lines before we even get into the breakdown of some of these different protein sources. You do not need protein powder to build muscle. Protein powder is a tool to hit your total protein goals for the day. So you do need a high protein diet to build muscle. And so if you have a protein target where you wanna get 150 to 200 grams of protein per day, these protein powders are a tool to help you hit those numbers. But adding protein powder in on top of a diet that meets all of your protein requirements from good whole foods is not gonna further enhance your gains. So protein powder is a tool, it's a very useful one. I personally use it, I recommend you use it too, particularly for convenient shakes, for post-workout shakes, really good, but I need you to know, first and foremost, protein powder is not necessary for building muscle, it's just convenient and helpful. Now, to get into these protein powders here, what I've done is I've divided up a couple different categories. We have our milk-based proteins up top, whey and casein, we have some of our popular plant-based proteins in green, and we have egg protein, and we have beef protein. Um, in the middle column, we have the biological value, and I wanna define that before we go into the rest of this video. And basically, what that means is if you consume 100 grams of each of these protein powder sources, how much much of those 100 grams is actually utilized and put into your body as nitrogen in new muscle tissue. So something with a high biological value close to 100 means you are utilizing almost all of that protein to build muscle. Something with a low biological value means you take 100 grams of that protein, only 20 grams of that might be like absorbed. If it has a biological value of 20, not just absorbed, but utilized in the muscle tissue. So we want a high biological value. And then in the third category, we have something called leucine. If you're not familiar yet, leucine is one of the most special amino acids that directly stimulates muscle growth. It's in this family of amino acids called BCAAs, which you've probably heard of, uh, branch chain amino acids. Of the BCAAs, leucine is really the superhero that's a direct trigger on a cellular level of mTOR in protein synthesis. So we also want a protein that's high in leucine for the purposes of muscle building. So let's break them down. I had to start with whey because whey is the most popular protein supplement out there, period. Um, and whey and casein are kind of like brother and sister, if you will. They come from milk protein. So if we took milk protein isolate, like a glass of milk, it's naturally 70% casein, 30% whey. In the process of processing, they're able to take the whey away from the casein and make it into a protein powder source. Benefits of whey, it's very fast acting, it's well tolerated by a lot of people, and it has a very, very high biological value. You know, you can get different sources in citations, but around 90 to 95% uh, percent of biological value, making it very good. And also on this list, it's the highest source of leucine. So whey is a phenomenal protein source because it's high in leucine, high biological value, good value, it's very affordable, well tolerated by most people. Casein is a much different protein. It's also from the milk family, but it's very slow digesting. So if whey gives you this spike of amino acid levels, casein kind of gives you this slow drawn out release because it forms a little bit of a gel in your stomach and time releases itself. And without getting too um, into the nitty gritty deal, details, there's a couple different types of casein. Um, and we have deep dive videos on casein because there's more to casein that meets the eye and there are some health problems with casein that go beyond the scope of this muscle building video. But looking at casein, biological value of 77 and it's still very high in leucine. Now, casein is often touted in the muscle building circles as something you should have late at night. And I think the research does support this, is that taking casein pre-bedtime can increase this kind of protein synthesis effect over the night. And people, there are some studies we'll also link down in the description, people who do use casein at night have better muscle building results. Now, there are some serious health problems with casein. I don't wanna get into deep dive on them. We'll actually link the video in the description, but certain kind of caseins are positively associated with increased risk for cancer, can be allergenic, can harm your digestive tract, and this comes down to the right kinds of casein, because there's different kinds, so we'll get into that in a different video. But casein, 
is a super muscle building powerhouse. And this is an important point here. It has a lower biological value than whey, but it's different nature. Being a slow release protein makes it very useful for certain times of the day. And if you don't care about cancer, but you want to build muscle, casein could be a part of your muscle building routine. Now we have our plant-based proteins, which I think are very unique because a lot of people um, believe and plant-based proteins get a bad rap because they're not complete proteins and they can't be good for muscle building. That is all crap. Soy, quinoa, rice, and pea are all phenomenal protein sources. They have high biological values in the 60 to 73 um, range, particularly um, around quinoa is a really great one and rice protein is another great one. Um, and they have you know, definitely about half the amount of leucine you'd find in an animal-based protein. And this might be the only ding against a plant-based protein is they're lower in leucine. But a lot of these good plant-based protein powders here, like this raw organic protein from Garden of Life, they actually add leucine in it and make sure you're getting enough leucine. Um, and so what I'd ideally shoot for, if I'm getting around 30 grams of protein, which is a heaping scoop of most whey proteins, I'd want there to be around four grams of leucine. So this is four grams of leucine per 100 grams. So the good protein powders that are plant-based, that are muscle building specific, typically spike them with a little more leucine. You can also just get some leucine powder on your own at home from something like bulk supplements and get your favorite plant-based protein powder, toss a little leucine in it, and that could help augment the muscle building effects. But plant-based protein is totally good to go. And the best plant-based protein powders combine different sources. So it's not just all pea or all rice. It's a combination of maybe some soy, rice, hemp, chia, all these different protein sources. And that gives you a blended amino acid profile. And what we know from the research as well is that plant-based foods, and people can build lots of muscle on vegetarian diets if they want to go that way, because when you mix your different protein sources, things like rice plus legumes plus hemp, your body gets this whole mixture of amino acids it needs, and it can build muscle just fine. But for me personally, when I'm using plant-based protein powder, I want one that's nice and blended. There'll be some links in the description. Now, down here we have eggs and beef, which are the last two to round out this list, and I'm going to give you our overall recommendations. Eggs are a really amazing protein source. They have one of the highest biological values of 94, and that goes for the egg white and the egg yolk. Now, the majority of the protein in egg, almost all of it, is in the egg white. We know this. Um, and so egg whites are a really great protein source. Some people do have allergies to eggs. So if you find that you eat eggs and your throat is scratchy, you feel a little lethargic, you don't feel right, then this might not be the protein source for you. And that goes for all of these. People have allergies. The casein in particular is a very common thing as well. But if you can tolerate eggs, it is a great protein source. I will preface this. I have never met an egg protein that did not taste like absolute SHI fill in the blank. It's not good tasting stuff. Um, not to pick on these guys, but you, I dare you to put this stuff in a bottle um, and shake it up with some milk. Egg white protein powders are typically nasty, but eggs themselves are great muscle building food. So I recommend you get eggs into your diet and you just have them that way and use a different kind of protein, but get your eggs through, you know, however you like to cook your eggs, ideally on low temperature, not to oxidize the cholesterol in the egg yolks. So um, egg white protein, if it's blended in, there was a protein when I used to do a lot of bodybuilding called Pro Complex from Optimum Nutrition that had a blend of, uh, I think, whey casein and some egg and maybe some plant-based proteins. Really good blend, um, but egg, egg protein by itself, tough on the protein powder side. And then there's been a recent resurgence now with a lot of people following more primal, paleo, keto diets who are like, now we're doing some hydrolyzed beef protein also a very viable protein source. Um, high biological value of 80, lots of leucine, very well tolerated. People who find that they have digestive issues with any of the dairy proteins or the plant-based proteins sometimes do really well with beef protein. For me personally, if I'm gonna have beef in my diet and make a, you know, have a really great grass-fed steak or something like that, I'd rather eat it than have it in protein form. There are plenty of other proteins, and quite frankly, I believe that there are health benefits um, to things like whey, like the increase in glutathione production that make it a better protein source than beef um, in terms of using it as a protein powder. But it does totally work. There's some brands out there like Carnivore and other stuff that beef protein, it can get the job done. But again, when our body gets these things, as long as it has enough leucine and we're hitting our protein target for the day, we're kind of splitting hairs on which one of these is best. Now, we do have a little bit of a horse in this race because after kind of looking at this research, my personal opinion is for most people, a good old fashioned whey protein is typically the way to go, unless you are strictly plant-based. Me in my life, I use a whey protein 
and a plant-based protein and I use it at different times. But I like to have a whey protein like our Fit Father Super Fuel, which is basically a clean whey mixed with some super greens, nothing fancy, um, and that's a good way to hit my protein targets. So if I have a, you know, in between lunch and dinner, if I need a, to get my protein target up, I'll combine some of my Super Fuel whey protein shake with some nuts and seeds, maybe some oatmeal to get the carbs up and hit my numbers. That is a great muscle building snack, but you can use any protein you want. Um, obviously, we have one that we love here at the Fit Father Project that's clean, but we'll also give you some links to some other great ones, especially when the plant-based proteins, like things like uh, you know the raw organic proteins here from Garden of Life, super good choice. So we'll give you some of our preferred brands and options for you to kind of peruse them, find which one fits your budget um, on Amazon, et cetera, below. But the key take home message here is that all protein powders are good for building muscle. If you get the right protein target through the day, whole foods, getting your diet in check is first and foremost the best thing. If I were to recommend times where you might want to supplement with protein, it's either replace, if you have trouble getting a good breakfast in because you're so busy in the morning, get a good muscle building protein shake first thing in the morning, get some mixed berries in there, some healthy fats, some carbs like the oats. That could be a great morning thing or post-workout, getting a scoop of protein, a heaping scoop around 30 grams or five grams of creatine is a great way to supplement your protein targets before you might have dinner or whenever you work out during the day. So, that is the rundown. My personal preference, whey or a good plant-based protein powder. I like to eat my eggs. I stay away from casein because I think there's some compelling research that there are other health um, harming effects of certain casein proteins. In beef, I'd rather actually eat the steak than have it ground up in a bottle, but that's just me. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, drop us a comment below. Um, we'd love to discuss this topic more. I know it's a very heated, debated topic because there's so many people who are trying to sell you different things, but we're here to really just provide you with the research and the no BS information. So if you like this, then definitely subscribe to our Fit Father Project YouTube channel. We have over 500 videos on the channel covering some deep dive nutrition stuff, how to build muscle, especially if you're a guy in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, how to lose fat fast, how to get and stay motivated. All the exercise tutorials, the list goes on. All that is on the channel waiting for you. So love for you to subscribe, join our family here on YouTube, and give us a thumbs up and drop us a comment below. Thanks for being here, my friend. Go forth and build some muscle and eat your protein.